we support an XY plot to the RTXY plot uh, web part. So this is for measuring relationships between independent variables. So for example, well, the classic would be uh, pressure and temperature. As temperature rises in a system, generally the pressure goes up. So if you want to measure that and you know take a look at things like the R coefficient, the coefficient of correlation, that's available with the RT web part or the RTXY plot. Now, how we how we align those values, the X values and the Y values, can be very tricky. We're going to go over what those different options are. We're going to start with interpolating all from, from both sets of data, interpolating values at exact intervals so that we know they're all lining up uh, sequenced in time. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. I'll go into an existing web part page. I'm just going to add another web part. This is going to be the RTXY plot. There it is. I just got lucky. Found it right there. We'll go ahead and add that. And like all of our web parts, we have to configure it now. So I'll go into the XY plot. Choose Edit, Modify Shared Web Part. And I need to choose at least two tags. Now you'll notice, although there is only going to be one tag representing the X axis, that's the uh, you know the horizontal axis. You can have as many Y axis tags as you want. I'm just going to keep it simple. Uh, we'll go and find two tags. These both begin with the letters B A. This is just a um, yeah. This is a, a simulator. We'll look at temperature. And um, well, let me see. Let's go with concentration. We don't have pressure here. Let's go with temperature and concentration. So we'll see if there's a relationship between the two of these. Now you've got an interesting opportunity to kind of uh, show what you're trying to show by choosing which is going to be the x-axis. You know, the x-axis is normally interpreted as time, and most people think of that as the, the cause rather than the effect. So if you think it's temperature that's driving concentration, then a good idea would put, would be to put temperature on the x-axis. So for my x tag, I'm choosing temperature. Now, this is where it can get complicated. How are we going to align this data? Well, by uh, interpolating data, what this means is we are going to look at, let's look at this interval right here. Uh, this is our start time and end time. We're going to look at, divide that start time and end time by 10 minute intervals. So in this case, that's 120 minutes. This is going to give us 12 results. Actually, I think I'd like more than that. Let's go with five minute intervals. So this is going to do even five minute time slices. We interpolate through the compressed data, through the data that's on our archive, and we find uh, timestamps that are identical for both sets of data. Now that's the best way to do it, or the typical way to do it, I should say. Sometimes people like to offset one versus another, see if there's some kind of a time lag to do a cross correlation, but you know typically these are going to be synchronized in time, although we do support you know having different timestamps for each you know for the x and and the different y's. So that's enough to get us started. Let me go ahead and say OK. And what we're going to see is hopefully it should show us that there is a relationship and a strong relationship between these two variables between the um, the temperature and the concentration. And you know what? That's pretty disappointing. I don't see any correlation there at all. But what we're looking at here uh, along the x-axis we're measuring the temperature. Along the y-axis we're measuring concentration. Tell you what, let's look at temperature versus level. That might be more instructive. The other thing is I'd like to show you how to add uh, some statistics onto this. Like for example the coefficient of correlation. So let's modify the shared web part. And we'll keep the same, and we'll, we'll dump the uh, concentration, and we'll instead go with, let me go ahead and delete that. We'll go ahead and add, this is going to be level. There we go, we'll go ahead and add this to the trend. Uh, temperature is still going to be the x-axis. Now the other thing I'd like to do, is show the coefficient of correlation. So this correlation coefficient option, I'll go ahead and put that on there. I think I'll get rid of some of this other stuff. I don't need the description or the last value. 
And I'll go ahead and say OK. Now let's see if this has a correlation. Yeah, this does have, well, it's a it's not a strong one. Well, I guess it might be mild. A 0.75 coefficient of correlation. As you can see, and if you look at the actual numbers here, so you can see basically as the temperature rises, uh, we're saying the level is going up as well. Well, anyway, this is mock data. But that's how you would identify those types of correlations. Now, one final note on this. I only showed you one of many different ways that you can align this data. Some of the other ways, instead of interpolating this, you can specify recorded data. And this is something that's going to be, uh, that's going to be uh, available for both the x and the y axis. And if I specify recorded data, then that's simply going to find all the x values that are actual values. And now I can synchronize y to the x values to the actual x values. So in other words, these would be unevenly separated, you know, as pi data typically is when it's stored in the archive. But these would be synchronized to that. Now there's all other types of options as well. You can try to find a match. And if there is no match, you ignore the data. Uh, you can choose match or previous or match or next, which will, in fact, uh, go for the next value after or before the the timestamp of the x-axis. So there's a lot of ways you can do this. Uh, in this case, if you notice, if I choose synchronize there, it's going to be the same data, or excuse me, not the same data, this, uh, roughly the same, that's yeah, roughly the same results, 0.81. But um, what we're doing is we're, we're finding actual real values this time instead of slicing through the data. So instead of having at five minute intervals, if you look at the timestamps, the timestamps of the x-axis are actual timestamps of archive values. So that's our xy plot.